Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship this morning at Zion. We are participating in three baptisms this morning. We had a baptism at 8.30 as well. And it is a joy to welcome all of you who are probably, some, many of you who are visiting for these little ones. We have little Grayson and Tegan and Georgie. And we are so excited to share in their baptism this morning. Our prayer is that your day is just filled with all kinds of joy as you gather together. And every time we take part in a baptism, we are reminded of our own and give thanks to God for those promises that we live in every single day. Okay, this next thing, I'm actually going to say it and, you know, don't throw tomatoes or anything, but September, there I said it is right around the corner. And that means Z-Fest is around the corner as well. And that is Sunday, September 10th, two Sundays from now. And we are going to have a wonderful ch uh, chicken picnic dinner, or lunch. And we are going to have games and bouncy houses and music and all kinds of wonderful things to do together. We're a service project that uh, is simple and easy and can be completed right that day. We'll take part in that as well. And if you have a beloved pet, we are going to have a pet blessing as well. You'll have time to run home and grab your pet and leash and or crate and bring them back. And blessing is at 12.15 and you'll still have time to eat. So that is really, truly right around the corner, September 10th. No cost. So we really hope that you'll invite some friends and invite people from the community to take part in Z-Fest this year. Your call committee is meeting tomorrow night, and the exciting thing about that is the bishop's office is bringing us names of candidates to be potentially, potentially interviewed for our associate pastor position. Continue to keep that group in your prayers as well as those pastors who are in that interviewing process as well. Let's see, one more piece. I do this all the time at 1030. I want to say welcome to those who are online as well and encourage you to talk to one another in the chat and welcome one another to worship. And I will invite those of you who are here to stand and do the same as you welcome each other to worship this morning. morning. We are gathered together in the same way that we live, and that is in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. So it is in the name of Jesus Christ that your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as we sing together. Oh. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you as the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, so that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, I invite Grayson and Tegan and Georgie's families and godparents to please join me here at the baptismal font. It is such a joy to take part in this day with you this morning. And as I've said before, we don't simply ever just watch a baptism. You are representatives of the larger church, the body of Christ, and you surround these three little ones with faith today. And you just engulf them with what helps us live and walk in this life that we lead so I am going to just, I just want you to know who everybody is, first of all. So this is Grayson Lee, and we have Tegan Hazel over here, and then this is Georgie Louise. So we are so glad you're all here. Now, that is a lot for me to keep straight all these first and second names, but I'll do it. In baptism, we are given a new birth. And we are reminded of all the ways that God has used water throughout time to remind his people, to remind us of his gracious love and care for us. We think of when the water was created, think of when Noah and the flood, the parting of the Red Sea, and our Lord Jesus' own baptism as well. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you are rich in mercy and love. We give you thanks for giving us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. We give you thanks for by this water and this word, we are delivered from sin and death and given new life in Christ Jesus. 
We give you thanks that this sacrament also unites us with all the baptized into one body of Christ and anoints us with the Holy Spirit. All of these things we lift to you and give you thanks and praise. Together we say, Amen. So now parents and sponsors, you have promises to make this day. That is just what it's like to be a mom, isn't it? You always got to <laughs> grab some more things. You have promises to make this day. And so I am asking you, as you bring Grayson and Tegan and little Georgie forward for the sacrament of holy baptism, do you promise to live with them, um, with them among God's faithful people, bring them to the word of God and the Holy Spirit, to place into their hands the gift of God's holy scriptures, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, and the Creed, and to nurture them in their faith so that as they grow up, they will always know Jesus' love for them. And so I ask, do you promise to do these things and help Grace and Lee? If so, please say, we do. And do you promise to do this and help with Tegan Hazel? If so, please say, we do. And do you promise to support and help little Georgie Louise? If so, please say, we do. And sponsors, your job now is to make sure these parents continue in this promise and in their promises they have just made. And also, the fun part of your work as godparents is to be the storytellers, to take this story of today and help make sure these three little ones know this story, that they were baptized with two other little ones, and tell them and tell them and tell them that we want them to know that Jesus loves them, and that's why their parents brought them here. So people of God, I ask you, do you promise to support these young families and pray for them? If so, will you please respond, we do. And I'll invite you to please stand. And now we surround these three little ones with our faith. First of all, let me ask you, do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? And do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, will you please say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. Okay, Grace and Lee. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. She looks like she kind of wants to sleep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's nap time, of course. Okay, sweetie. Grace and Lee, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. I know. I know it. <laughs> I know. That's just hard. So, Tegan, Hazel. Well, hi, sweetie. And Tegan is asleep. So, Tegan, <laughs> Hazel. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And Georgie Louise. Well, hi, sweetheart. 
Georgie Louise, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, sweetie. Yes. Shall we pray? Gracious Lord, we give you thanks and we pray for these young families. We are so thankful that their parents have brought them to the waters of baptism so that they know your promises for each step of their lives. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you would remind all of us that in this gift we are given a new birth. We are cleansed from sin so that we will be raised to eternal life. Amen. So now we will share a blessing of these little ones. So sponsors, I invite you to come and lay your hands on these little ones that you are sponsoring as a way of blessing. And this will happen to them again, and it'll seem like a blink of an eye when they reaffirm and confirm their baptism as well. So let us pray. Sustain Grayson Lee, Tegan Hazel, and Georgie Louise with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Georgie Louise, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Tegan Hazel, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. And Miss Grayson. Grayson Lee, you, I'll turn a little bit, you have been marked, oh I know it, with the sign of the cross and sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. My hands are still cold, so I'm sorry, sweetie. <laughs> but I also told these families during our uh, baptism class that uh, that sound of a little one crying is, I know, a little nerve-wracking for parents, but it's the sweetest sound for those of us who don't have to care for them right now. <laughs> um, so it's a joy. And this is Josie, who is a member of our Hi. council and has some things to share with you. Good morning. The cross of Christ is an important symbol. On behalf of the congregation, we give each of you this handmade cross as a remembrance of three things. Of this day of baptism and of Christ's command to take up your cross and follow me. I give each of you one. You want to take it? We have a member here at Zion who makes all of these crosses and members who make the little napkins with the crosses oh, on them as beautiful. well. So thank you. Through baptism, God has made you a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all people. Thank you. So will you bring Grayson and Tegan and Georgie out here? These three are the newest members of the body of Christ. And I can just imagine you three growing up in Sunday school together and running the halls here at Zion as you are just immersed in God's love and God's care. We love you and Jesus loves you. Will you help me welcome these three? We will, oh, there, we'll do that first, sure. <laughs> yes. Good for you. Let's read together the words of welcome. We welcome you, Grayson, Tegan, and Georgie, into the body of Christ and into the mission that we share with Christ, Christ's word, strength and faith, and to serve those in need. Amen. Welcome. And yeah, let's just say welcome one more time. And parents, we are praying for you as you walk this walk and as you bring your children up in the faith. I'll invite you guys to be back at your seats. And all the other kids, I invite you to come and join us up here by the baptismal font. So 
come on over. I have someone here with me this morning for children's time. And you've met, some of you have met her before. Her name is Kim. This is Kim, and she is going to help me share some things with you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Find hey. a comfy spot. All right, how many of you remember last Sunday? Seems like a long time. Does it seem like a lot was a long time ago? <laughs> Last Sunday, we, did, we learned about this, right? Remember, we sang a song. Do you remember what song it was? Jesus loves me, right? And every time we said the word love, we made our, our sign like this. And you know that that comes from the Bible. Jesus said that we are to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And that we are to love one another as well. And I have asked Kim to share with you a couple things. She has a couple questions for you this morning, right? I do. So you guys, you learned about that Jesus loves you. And who else does he ask us to love? Jesus has asked us to love other people too. Who does he want us to love? Mommy and Daddy? <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> Who do you think? Our family and our friends and God. Absolutely, that is true. That, that is very true. Anybody else have any ideas? Who we're supposed to love? You think that covers all of it? Who do you think? Everybody. That is really true. He wants us to love everybody. We're going to talk about loving everybody for a minute. Love is an action word. Has anybody ever heard of that before? What the heck is an action word? You heard of that before? We're going to talk about what it means to have love be an action word. Has anybody ever heard of a game called Simon Says? You have? Let's stand up. Let's play a teeny Simon Says. I'm going to be Simon, okay? So Simon Says, stand up. He stood up. Simon I'm... Says, put your hands in the air. Simon <laughs> Says, wave your fingers. Simon Says, clap your hands. Simon says, pat your neighbor gently. Or pat yourself, that's good too. Okay, Simon says, sit down. When those were all action words, when we stood, when we put our arms up, when we wiggled our fingers, when we did the things, those were all actions. And love is also an action. When we love somebody, then we help them and we serve them and we want them to have good things, right? So that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about loving our neighbor. Okay, I have another question. Who's our neighbor? What do you think? Who is our neighbor? Who do you think? You are absolutely right. It's everybody. And it's the people around us that, that we're able to serve the easiest. We do love the people out everywhere, but the people around us are the easiest, easiest ones to love. Okay, now I have another question. This is the tricky one. Who has a baby at home? Put your hand up if you have a baby at home. Yep. Oh, yep. lots? Lots of babies. And we have some babies up here. What do babies need? A bottle. Yep. What else do babies need? Milk. Yep. What else? Nookies. They, yeah, some babies love their nookies. Yeah. How, what do you think? Yep. A blanket. And what do they need to help them stay clean? A bath. Baths are great. That's right. How about, look at that picture. Do you get any ideas of what babies might need from that picture? What? Diapers. Diapers. <laughs> so you guys, Zion right now is having what is called a diaper drive. We are collecting diapers so that we can show love to the babies in our area so that we can make sure the babies have what they need. So we're showing love by collecting diapers and giving them to the babies. And you guys, you guys don't have jobs, so you probably can't buy diapers, right? Right? You can show love in other ways, but the grown-ups, the grown-ups in your world can buy diapers or can donate financially to the babies in our, in our community. And we're having a diaper drive. I'm going to talk to the adults just for a minute. 
So we're having a diaper drive, and it's going to be the next three weeks, and we're asking that you will donate diapers for infants, pull-ups for toddlers, anything in that area. And if you don't have time to shop and you'd like to donate financially, we would be happy to do the shopping for you. And as a tiny incentive, we are offering a, or have a drawing for a home-baked treat for those. So if you do donate something, make sure you enter the drawing. Okay, back to the kids. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to think about one more thing, one more question. What is something that you can do to show love to the people around you? Anybody have any ideas? That you can you make love an action word. What can you do? What about giving somebody a hug? Could you give somebody a hug and show them you love them? Or are you going to do it right now? That's awesome. What else? What would you, what do you think? What did you say? Another hug? That is a great way to show love. And that is what Jesus wants us to do. Just as he loves us, we can share his love with other people. Thank you so, so much, Kim. Uh, there is a display out in the lobby area to share a little bit more about our diaper drive. You guys, let's pray together, okay? And Kim, will you help me um, repeat after me with the kiddos? For sure. All right, here we go. Ready? Dear God, dear God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. For Jesus' love. For Jesus' love. Help us to put it to action. Help us to put it to action by the things we do. By the things we do. And all of God's people pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And I have a love coloring page for you. If you want to get one, come see me. The first reading is from Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, and he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read the psalm with me responsibly. 
I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness, for you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is a reading from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. 
They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you, any of you by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither to toil or spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what we will wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given unto you as well. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. Peter Gomes is a, uh, was a pastor and really one of America's greatest preachers. And he served as chaplain at Harvard, at, at the chapel there at Harvard. And he wrote a book called The Good Book. And in it, he describes our relationship, meaning Americans' relationship with the Bible. And this is how he describes it. He said, we have a relationship with the Bible like a relationship with an acquaintance. And then he paints this picture. You're in the mall, and you're walking along, and you spot someone that you've met, and you know, and you know you should know their name, and they're coming intently toward you, and your brain is going, okay, okay, first of all, how do I know this person? What context? And what in the world is their name? And you're kind of embarrassed because you don't know. He says, that's the way many Americans are with Scripture. We know we should know it, and yet we don't have a really strong relationship with it, so we get a little embarrassed by that. Today, we're going to look at some sayings that often are thought of being in the Bible, but really are not. We're just going to look at four of them together today. For one of them is one you probably know, but when you're asked what Eve gave Adam to eat, we usually say, the apple, right? And that's actually not in Scripture at all. No apple. Scripture says that Adam and Eve ate of a fruit. So how did we get apple? That just got passed down through time as artists started painting and portraying the, the, the scene of creation. Fruit went to apple. Three wise men, right? You can find on the internet that there were three wise men. You can't find that in Scripture. In Scripture, actually, it says that there were three gifts given, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So that's how, through the ages, we say, okay, if there were three gifts, there must have been three wise men. So, you know, at Christmas, we always have three wise men in our nativity. But the Bible doesn't say that there were three. I mean, maybe they got together and had group gifts, right? Who knows? So whether it's an apple or whether there were three wise men or more, these two things do not make or break our faith. Our faith does not hinge on those sorts of details. But there are some sayings that people believe come from the Bible that are in common culture that actually, if you bring them to their end, say some rather odd things about our God. And so it's important for us to know which ones are in the Bible and which are not. So back in the years when Jay Leno was hosting The Tonight Show, you might remember that he had this little piece where he'd have one of the interns go out on Hollywood Boulevard or wherever they were, and he'd have an earpiece, and Jay would tell them questions to ask the people that were passing by. 
And one of the questions was, can you name one of the Ten Commandments? So the intern asks the first person who comes by, oh, sir, can you name for me just one of the Ten Commandments? And the guy answers, yeah, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> Which actually is a half-truth. And actually, the reason it's important to know that this is only a half-truth is because if we think about this, if we are saying to someone, you know, out of the goodness of our hearts, like we're trying to give someone advice and we're trying to say, come on, you can do this, I know you can do this, and besides, God helps those who help themselves. But if you think a little bit about what that is truly saying, that is saying you have no body of Christ, no community to help you. And that's what baptism is partly about. And what Jesus says, in fact, is the exact opposite of God helps those who help themselves. Jesus says, we are to help one another. We live in a culture that is so intent and so proud about our independence that this saying people think surely has to be in the Bible somewhere. Or a lot of people say, okay, if it was in the Bible, they think Ben Franklin invented it. But that's not true either. It actually comes from Greek mythology. And in Greek mythology, this was the saying, the gods, small g, help those who help themselves. And so Jesus says a much different thing. Well, that's one of the first guys who said it. He was a politician. Uh, let me just flip. So this is uh, what Jesus says about how we have relationships with one another. He puts helping one another and loving one another right up there with helping, or excuse me, with loving God. So that's how important it is to love your neighbor as yourself. Over and over in the Bible, that is the sentiment. Carry one another's burdens. Zion, you do that well. You do that really well. For example, you don't look at someone whose entire neighborhood has just been destroyed by a, a fire and say, well, you know, good luck to you. God helps those who help themselves. Now, you help. Same with the diapers. You don't look at a little baby ever and say, with a messy diaper, you know, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> so there is a little truth in this saying, as is the case in most of these sayings. We do know, of course, that God helps us all of the time. And in fact, the Bible tells us that God helps the helpless. And when we think about God being in partnership with us and helping us through our lives, of course God helps us when we help ourselves, but God also helps us when we cannot help ourselves. And that is actually much of what Jesus says. This one. My mom used this one a lot. Cleanliness is next to godliness. I used it on my own kid. But it's not in the Bible. This one seems pretty logical and seems like it should be in the Bible, doesn't it? Especially if you think about the Old Testament, there are hundreds, I'm not joking, hundreds of laws and rules about what is clean and what is unclean. So it seems like cleanliness being next to godliness should be in the Bible. In fact, we talk in baptism about being cleansed, made clean from our sin. So it makes some sense that it would be there, but it's not. So I'm sorry, parents, you can't use it on your kids. Well, at least you can't use it and tell them it's from the Bible. So the next one, oh, I just, I forgot to make the leap to, for Jesus, the matter of clean versus unclean is a matter of our hearts, not a matter of how well we keep house or how often we wash our hands. It's a matter of the heart for Jesus. This next one, money is the root of all evil. It's a common one, but actually that's not in the Bible either. In scripture, money doesn't have the qualities of good or evil. 
Wealth, in fact, in the scriptures is not a sin. Job was a wealthy, wealthy man, and he is described as a man who is blameless and upright, a man who feared God and turned away from evil. So wealth is not the sin in scriptures, but your relationship to your wealth and how generous you are with your wealth is of great concern in scripture and for Jesus. So if you thought for sure this was in the Bible, you're half right, because actually what it says is the love of money is the root of all evil. It's important to know that little piece in there because what the scriptures are telling us is what is your relationship to money? And in fact, you know, fall is coming and most churches have a stewardship drive in the fall when we talk about your, you know, your raising money to do all the programs that we do. But that is more than asking to raise money. That is about asking you to think about your relationship to money. Avarice is what the Greeks called it. If you were so intent on building your wealth that you forget your relationships, that is avarice. And so what is your relationship? Because when you love your money over people, when you love your money so much that you cheat other people, when you love your money so much you can just hold on to it and you're not generous with it, that is the root of all evil and it causes all kinds of evil in our lives. The last one. The lion shall lie down with the lamb. It's not in the Bible. Jesus in, in Revelation is referred to as both the Lion of Judah and the Lamb of God, but this is not in Scripture. You can find it on Google. <laughs> and you can find really pretty pictures of it as well. What Scripture actually says is this. The wolf shall lie down with the lamb. It's a half-truth, right? Right? It says the same thing, the lion and the lamb, or the wolf and the lamb. It says the same thing, that God's kingdom is so much more than we can hope for or dream of or think. It's so completely different from what we know in this life. So much so that the lion and the lamb, the wolf and the lamb will be able to be together. So your faith doesn't hinge on this whether it's a lion or a lamb. But what does all of this kind of point to? Points to the fact that we need to know our scripture better. And not so you can win some trivia con or contest or, you know, tell your brother-in-law at Christmas, hey, that's not in the Bible. We need it for our relationship to God. God's word is a gift to us. God's word leads us and guides us. So we need to know it. We're going to do some things together this fall to address our relationship, which looks a little bit more like an acquaintance than it does a deep relationship to God's word. This is what scripture tells us about God's word. You shall imprint it on your heart and your soul. You shall bind it as a sign on your hand. It shall be a symbol for you between your two eyes, meaning it will lead you and guide you. You are to bind God's words to your hearts forever and tie them around your neck. That's how close our relationship with God's word is. And probably one that you, you know is that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It is pure gift to us. I'd like to close this morning with this thought for all of us. May the word of God direct all your days and sustain you in all your nights. May the word of God bless you with the assurance of all the hope that we have in Christ. And may the word of God bring you the peace of Christ that can only be given to us in Jesus and him crucified and raised again. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, your word is truly such a gift to us, and still we often neglect it and don't even know what's in it. Open our hearts to open our Bibles so that our entire lives might be wrapped in your love for us and your way for us. By your Holy Spirit, teach us to love your word. This we pray through him, the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. And we pray together, amen. Now we're going to sing together about the goodness of God.
Let us pray. God, full of abundance and grace, you are the giver of all good things, and we are grateful. Continue to sustain in us the will to be generous with all you have given us. Make us mindful of those in need and ever willing to serve as Jesus has taught, so that the world may be fed with your love. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Confident in our Lord's lis listening ear, a God who shows, sh shares both our joys and our sorrows, let us offer up our prayers. Heavenly Father, may we find ways to surrender our anxieties and fear to depend on the strength of your word. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We rejoice with the families of Grace and Tegan, Georgie and Aaron on this, their baptismal day. May they ever find strength and guidance and joy in your word. We pray for their families as they raise their children in faith, and we give you thanks for the promises of baptism that call us all to you and to one another. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for our precious youth who carry burdens we cannot quite imagine. Continue to make us bold here at Zion so that we continue to be a place where they are safe, seen, and celebrated. We look forward to a new year for Sunday School we give you thanks for the opportunities to learn from one another. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. O oh God, we give you thanks for the gift of this faith community and all who are a part of it. We pray with eagerness for our call committee. We entrust their work to the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. It is into your hands, O oh God, that we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your son jesus christ the one who has reconciled all creation to himself amen i invite you to please stand as we pray together and let us pray together the prayer that our lord teaches us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you go on your way, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I know that they don't do it for this reason, but I would love to say a word of thanks to our youth and family worship team for leading us in worship for our ushers, for our sound and tech guys, and so many people who work to make Sunday mornings so amazing here at Zion. Will you help me thank them? Thank you. So now, with all that we are and all that we do, we will trust in Christ, live for Christ, and serve with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Go now in peace to serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. I can see the clouds rolling. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me. I will not be moved. My feet are on the rock I can feel the waters rise I can hear the howling lies that haunt me Fear won't hold me now My feet are on the rock When I feel my
Stand all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. On grass is solid rock. I stand all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. On Christ is solid rock. I stand all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. When I feel my whole My feet are on the rock. 